What is up? We have a tactical overview of our last battle report. Uh, we'll, you'll find it linked here. And we're going to go over, this is basically an in-depth analysis of what happened in the game. Uh, we're going to go through like the list that we use. We're going to break that stuff down a little bit more. The strategies that we used are tactically like what we were thinking, why we moved here, there, wherever. Um, and just generally, like I said, an in-depth analysis. And uh, hopefully this is going to be pretty good educational experience. Um, we are using the new Saga of the Beast rules with both the orcs and the space wolves. So uh, super excited about that. It definitely changed uh, the armies. Um, I Patrick here, I played the space wolves and they are just like so much better. Um, and also I've got Kyle here. Yes, I'm here as well. Yeah, and he played he played orcs. Uh, how do you feel about the Saga of the Beast? Did it overall net gain for you? Oh yeah, definitely. It definitely brings up some uh, some downtrodden units and uh, brings some good fun in too. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, there's a lot of good things with the Space Wolves, like the uh, mainly like getting the litanies and then the stratagems, some of the stratagem support because uh, I was severely lacking before but all right so let's go ahead and get into it and hope you guys enjoy you can find the full list of of what we played down in the description as well so let's go here all right got some uh deployment going on all right so quick note here we are playing uh spoils of war okay so uh you can everyone can see here we've got Objectives here, 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 and here. So, um, yeah, and then with Spoils of War, it's you draw tactical objectives at the beginning of your turn. You draw three, and then that could be like go hold this for two turns. That could be go take this and hold it at the end of your turn, or it could be more specific like go kill characters. Uh, I think, Kyle, you had like successfully. Um, what was it? Summon or get a psychic power off? Yeah, I've been manifest a psychic power. Right, and then so they they vary for victory points, um, and obviously vary in difficulty. Like if you hold one for two turns, then you get two victory points versus most of the other ones were like one, or they could be variable. Like I had assassinate, which was kill characters, and if you killed up to three characters, then it was d three victory points instead of just the one for killing one character. So, um, and then you. So you draw three at the beginning of your turn. Uh, you play through your turn. At the end of your turn, you can discard one of them. And then you also discard the ones that you score. Those go away. And at the beginning of your next turn, you draw up to three again. And that's at the beginning of each player's turn. Um, so yeah, that's what we're, that's what we're doing. Um, yeah, so with that, I was pretty happy with my deployment here. I've got, you know objectives two five and six all super close together yeah so that's why i stuck that big mob up there yeah totally yeah i think i noticed that um that objectives two five and six like i i realized late game that i could secure them all with one unit and especially you with that 30 that 30 orc boy squad and that's why you place them there right yeah that's, yeah yeah um yeah and so real quick if you haven't seen the battle report um, uh, we'll break it down the deployment real fast whenever the deployment is over, which is soon. But yeah, this was a freaking great game. Like this was, I loved playing this game. It was very, very fun. Yeah. Um, and it was it was my personal first time playing the Maelstrom of War table, and that was actually a lot more, uh, a lot less taxing mentally than I was expecting it to be. Right. Yeah. It's pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably want to keep it simple until you got a good grasp of like the game and the rules if you're just getting new. All right, let's let's take it back. And oh, you're not going to let me do it. All right. So, here we go. So, um All right. So, the Space Wolves deployment, we got 10 Grey Hunters here, 10 Grey Hunters here, 10 Grey Hunters here. We've got a unit of 3 Thunder Hammer uh, excuse me, Thunder Wolves with Storm Shield and Thunder Hammer here and here. And then we have five um, Wolf Guard with Jump Packs and Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield. And that, I love that unit. It's hard to use, but 
they really, really shined in this game. Um, I've got 14 Fenrisian Wolves here. Murder Fang, which he got super duper huge buff with some of the stratagems uh, that are now available with the Saga of the Beast dropping. Um, it, was actually, it was actually kind of ridiculous. <laughs> um, I've got a Wolf Guard Battle Leader here with a Storm Shield and Power Fist. Null Stormcaller here. Then my Warlord here is a Rune Priest with a Runic Axe and uh, just a Bolt Pistol and whatnot. And for the Warlord trait, I took the um, Saga of the Hunter. And it's a unit affected by the Saga, and your charge phase can charge even if it advanced early on. And then what's awesome about this, if it gets a successful charge off in the game, then now that becomes a 6-inch Aura. That is something... Uh, specific with Space Wolves, that's really cool. Uh, deed of, it's called the Deed of Legend. So if you achieve that, then whatever you, that Warlord trait is now becomes an Aura, and I totally use that. And then the only other thing I've got down here is um, a Wolf Priest, and I specifically took that so that we could start, so I could start getting those litanies going. And I took Catechism of Hate, adding two inches to advanced rolls, which is huge for space wolves especially since space wolves were totally lacking in ways to affect the charge turn and i mean it to me that doesn't make any sense at all just because it's a freaking it's a get in your face type of army and uh so they really needed that and then also i have seven terminators uh in deep strike and they have the various assortment of weapons but they do also have, they have a assault cannon and they've got a few combat close combat weapons all right, uh, what you got here, Kyle? All right, so we'll just go from the top down there. I've got my my thirty boys with a knob with a power claw, just you know standard standard orc stuff. You gotta have your boys. And then I've got my my morkanaut there, the big mech inside. I like to keep the big mech just to keep him fixed up. You know, he's gonna lose a few wounds here and there, and big mechs helps with that yeah, and whether um, is that is that that's like four wounds or something a turn what is that no it's uh d3 oh d3 okay okay yeah you can you can spend a, a cp to or not a cp it's sorry it's a relic to make him do an automatic three um i also have a custom force field on that guy help my help my boys stay alive uh, and then just below that cannon there i've got my my beautiful, beautiful war boss on his bike. Yeah, beast. I love, I love that cruise missile. Um, so my warlord trait, I did brutal but cunning. So I can reroll failed hits the turn he charges, and I get plus one damage. That in combination with the killer claw, he's doing four damage for each wound. Hmm. And he's he's hitting on twos, rerolling those ones from brutal but cunning. It's it's a nasty mess, and it's wonderful. Yeah, that, that I thing was can... also using the biggest boss from Saga of the Beast, which ah. gives him plus one wound and a four up invulnerable save, which is amazing. Oh, he also gets uh, plus one attack. Um, so he's dishing out a lot of hurt, and finally has an invuln save that's better than a six up. Yeah, you can merc some stuff with that for sure. Yeah. Uh, then I've got my battle wagon, which I have. A, I model it as a, as a saw, but it is actually a uh, what is it called? The um, death roller. Okay. Which, which makes it a really nasty close combat unit. Yeah, for sure. Now again, I used. A custom job. So I have two. I forgot to mention this for the the Morkonaut. So because I have a big mech, I get one custom job free, which is a new stratagem from Saga the Beast. And then I spend another CP uh, so that each the Morkonaut and the Battle Wagon get a custom job. And let me take a look at the custom jobs here, so I can make sure I'm not screwing that up. So for the Morkonaut, I gave him. Uh, let's see, what's it called? Orchimatic Pistons. Adds <laughs> three inches to his move characteristic and can reroll advances. For walker units, that's incredible. Um, you can put that on Killicans, Death Dreads, or the Morkonaut, Gorkonaut. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so he now has 11-inch movement, which is fantastic. 
Yeah. And then for the battle wagon, I used Fortress. Uh, so it gives it a three up save instead of a four up, and it gives it a five up invulnerable save. Mm. So it makes it last a little bit longer. Uh, I had it equipped with um, 18 boys and a war boss in Mega Knob armor. Mm -hmm. So helps them get, get to where they're going. Just below that, I've got a gang of knob bikers. Whew. So the boss knob, he's got a power claw. Uh, three have a choppa and a big choppa, and then the other three just have dual choppas. Uh, below that, I've got another unit of boys. Is it like again, 19 or something? Yeah. Again, boss knob, he's got a power claw. Then I've got my flyer wing there. Um, I've got two Blitz Obamas, which, man, I had I really looked at the rules for Saga of the Beast beforehand, I would not have taken those. I would have run them as the Burn Obamas. Holy cow, those got incredible buffs. Yeah. Um, and then I have my Waz Bomb Blasta Jet with a custom force field. Yeah, and I, I gotta say, dude, I love your your orc army. Like this made for an amazing video just because the uh all the custom stuff in there was like really painted really well and just stands out and made it look really cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um Yeah, and then so yeah, you know what? Let's let's just go ahead and let's just get let's get on going. All right. I didn't have to say you doing that model piece right here at the beginning was, or at the, uh, you surprised me with that overnight. It was, it was great. Looks yeah. amazing. All right. So what you thinking here? So the bombers, one of my first objectives I drew was to make an enemy fail a morale check. And I was thinking like, man, space wolves, that's never going to happen. I'm either going to kill them or not. And they're going to pass the morale. But then I realized you had those wolves there. And uh, typically units like that don't have great morale. Mm. So I was like, you know what? Let me check how far my, my flyer can move. And it turns out I could get my flyers over there. Well, actually, I, I moved the, the furthest one first. Um, and I bombed your wolves, killed 10 out of, you said you had 14, right? Yeah. So that was fantastic. That was great for me. That's, that's an auto-fail morale unless you spend CPs. Yeah, and you made room for your other <laughs> Blitz of Bama. Which, okay, that, however, was a mistake. I should not have moved the second one in there. Yeah. Be because, as we'll see later, you charged them mm -hmm. and just slaughtered them both. Yeah, did you, did, you, um, did you realize before you did that just how much flying stuff I had down there? I mean, it's, uh, it's honestly, deceptive. I got, a little, I got a little distracted by... Um, the opportunity to bomb things okay yeah well and then you you got that objective to fail make me fail a morale right. test which you got off and then what was the other one like a in shooting phase or something so i also had to, yeah i had to kill unit in shooting phase i believe i discarded that one and then i had to hold objective two for two turns which i was on objective two but i didn't want to stay there that long i planned on moving those guys up so i was a little a little disappointed by that objective mm -hmm. Um, I definitely didn't want to leave the Morka not behind because it has to get moving. Mm -hmm. Boys, I could jump later. Um, and I also did jumped a group of boys behind you. So part of your flyers, I kind of realized like, oh man, maybe I shouldn't have moved both my flyers that far. So part of the reason I jumped my boys back there was to get your jump marines off of my flyers. But that that failed. So yeah, that was kind of a big deal. Yeah, well, you and just for those watching, if you haven't seen, he jumped to this group right here, over back, right over here, um, and then, yeah, and so I've got my my jumpy boys, as I'm calling them, with the uh, the it's five wolf guard with storm shields and thunder hammers, and uh, and then like three of my HQ have jump packs. But I think the thing there that, that really made a, a difference for me is the fact that I got these Thunderwolves here. So I was able to just take these Thunderwolves, 
take care of your orc boys and send all my fly stuff after your flyers. Right. Um, if, if I would have deployed them a little farther away, like over here, and I was tempted to do that, then I think that tactic totally would have worked. Right. Or even if I had just made my charge, because it's pretty easy to make a 9-inch charge mm -hmm. with orcs. If I had made that charge, my flyers would have been fine. I would have lost probably one to the HQs. That's true. But I think I would have had at least one left. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, with orcs, you can definitely be way more uh, confident with that 9-inch charge. There's been so many times with not orc things that I've tried to depend on it, and it just fails and disappoints me, you know. <laughs> but you get like, you can reroll either one or both of your advance rolls. Right. Yeah. Or charge so, rolls. Or yeah, charge rolls. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty solid. Um, and then another mistake I made here with movement is the the battle wagon. Uh, for some reason, I had it in my head. I was like, all right, I'm going to go to Space Marines. They're shooty. So I need, I need to play this careful. I should have just charged up the middle with that thing. Um, yeah. He ended up getting pinned down in there. Um, it was just not in a good position for me. Yeah. Yeah, I... I don't, so, I mean, you notice, like, everything that deals damage in my list is close combat. Everything. Yeah. The only, I think literally the only shooting that I have it's completely is those 30 Grey Hunters, which it was, I think that was one kind of one of the strong sh suits of this list is that, because um, they, towards it, towards the end, my 30 Grey Hunters, they ended up doing some damage to your boys from the shooting. Yeah. That's just about the only thing they can hurt. But it was a good balance to where you were paying attention to everything else, like the Thunder Wolves that can wallop you, these five uh, Wolf Guard that can wallop you, and then, you know, I've got Null. Um, I gave them Living, Light Living Lightning and Smite and uh, some other ones, but just, you know, you can do a lot of Mortal Wounds there, and then my, my Rune Priest, I also got down that down there too, but not a lot of damage dealing, but it's it's a it's kind of a balance, you know. Like if you ignore them, then they could totally mow through your orc boys, especially when you got into range. And a lot of the like, I think this unit up here, I just didn't move them for two or three turns at right. all because I didn't need to, and they were able to sit back and enjoy bolter discipline and shoot at rapid fire range because I didn't move them, you know. Right. Um. All right. Yeah, and uh, I love how this battle like ended up kind of just, I don't know, this was just such a brutal melee, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. like uh, it was so brutal. Yeah, so those are those Fenrisian wolves that I totally lost in the morale phase, so he got that objective. Um, easy. Yeah, what you get, you killed 10 wolves from that, from that from one bomb. bomber. Uh, dude, yeah, that happened. I was like, oh no, like this is not because the previous game that I played, um, the Fenrir's Evil Wolves, they got a ton of attacks on one of your work boy squads. Yeah, you know, I was also was like, you know what, I want to deal with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, shot some of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they didn't. They they performed, I think, a very important job later on all right let's get past all of this there we go yeah so this is going into my turn and everyone can see there's that unit of work boys that is no longer here uh back there but yeah i'm about to just about to just fall in on the on all of this yeah. and uh wipe it up pretty easily um yeah, you, it's it's kind of interesting just because like the and I think this is why they've all like Games Workshop has played Space Wolves and Orcs off against each other in so many starter packs and whatnot, and they've always kind of like been together is because they're both they're both close combat, and I think it comes it's a very interesting uh, dynamic when you see both of them play because they both want to get into each other's faces and. You know, if you're going to play like Iron Hands, you're going to play that completely differently. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is kind of like 
what you wanted was the same thing I wanted, you know, and vice versa. Um, yeah. But yeah, so. Yep, there we go. Doing all the, the smiting. You can see. Yeah, all that stuff's about to get in. Yeah, that's a, that's a big loss right there for me. Mm hmm. Well, and, and what's significant too, and if you haven't played orcs uh, much, is that this unit right here, I was able to completely wipe it out. And at this point, you still had command points. Um, and so the last game that we played, I didn't realize that I had it backwards, that if you, if you didn't, if I didn't completely kill it, then you couldn't bring it back. And it's, it's obviously flipped. Like even if you, if you just had like one dude left, then you could spend the, the CP. Is it one CP? No, it's like three. Three, okay. Yeah, but then bring that back full strength. So the Thunderwolves, and I, I was debating, because I had two, two groups of three Thunderwolves over there. I was debating throwing everything over there, um, but my my gamble that Harold Deathwolf and the Thunderwolves could take care of that, and then everything else could take care of your flyers definitely paid off. Yeah. All right, Orc turn two. Yeah, here's another mistake. Uh, that that poor fortress. I should uh, just I was trying well, to initiate a combat and. Mm. Couldn't couldn't do as much there as I wanted to. Yeah, well, what you fought, you killed, but yeah, yeah, I knew I would just slaughter those marines. Yeah, yeah, and so uh, real quick at this point, so um, he had or I had assassinate, and his weird boy was chilling over here out in the open, and I had that uh, Terminator squad, you know, on dial. And so he jumped his into this nice little buffer zone, which um, I think was good for me in the end because I didn't, I almost dropped my uh, wolf guard or my terminators down there, right. but I didn't. And I think that was pretty clutch. Whereas if I would have gone for that bait and I would have killed him, I would have gotten the point with the assassinate for sure. But I think, Having that, having my Terminators come in when they did later in the game, um, there's at that point, there's nothing you could do about it, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I also have a bad habit of leaving my weird boy off alone. So that's part of the reason I did that. It's just yeah. build that habit of stop leaving him alone. Yeah. The, uh, the last, the, um, the Death Guard game, the, the thousand point one where I like sniped him out from the back with my flying demon prince. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and important note for the Space Wolves. Um, I charged, I got a successful charge off on those flyers back there that are yeah. dead now. So yeah, that I'll set you up for that. <laughs> yes, that was, that was great. So now going into these turns coming up, um, I am fully charged up with my ability to advance and charge, uh, which was, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, right. So I was I was also didn't move my bikes forward much because I I knew I needed to initiate with them, not get mm -hmm. charged. Yeah. Well, and that's that's why uh, the the last the last bit. I don't know if anyone noticed, but I started my murder fang off here, and then I dropped him back to here, and then now I'm bringing him back up. Right. So I did that because I knew I was I'm thinking the, the exact same thing. You know. Um. Where I, because you had this whole mess down here, and I was obviously going to be distracted, hopefully just for that one turn, which ended up being the case. But I didn't want to leave like just the murder fang and uh, this gray hunter squad just for these guys to get wrapped up really easily and taken care of, you know? Yeah. Um. So that i definitely think of the same thing. It's, and that's another thing where these two armies play off each other, interestingly, wanting the same thing, you know? Yeah. I also was using my fortress as a, as a shield wall for my bikes. Because mm -hmm. I didn't... I figured the fortress could survive quite a bit more than they could. Right. Um, yeah, and so, and so uh, tactics tip 
here. All right, so what I did here, um, and, and what he, what Kyle is doing with the fortress too, is we're both utilizing screens to protect stuff like valuable things. Okay, so if you're if you're new or getting getting into 40k, that is definitely a a really important tactic to kind of learn. So I've got my gray hunters coming off here kind of like as a wall right and then i have my thunder wolves here and then i've got my kind of hq bubble back here right so the reason i did that is because i wanted to force him to go that extra distance all the way around to get to my hq bubble if that's what he's going for but at the very least he has to get around to this guy which he doesn't really care that much about taking out the gray hunters he cares about this blob back here um and so just that little bit extra distance there. And, uh, and like I said, he's doing the same thing. We kind of canalized each other right here. But again, that is, that is screening is very important. And you'll see later, like I've got all my screening up here, but I don't really have anything back there. Um, and that'll definitely come into play later. Do you have any, any thoughts on that, Kyle? No, not really. Yeah. Just, uh, I think you underestimate the bikes a little bit. Yeah, well, I well that's why I did that because I knew that they can move, and I'm not I haven't played orcs like a, a super ton. So, like when you did that with your and a little bit what you see what you did with your uh, war boss there, um, yeah, cruise missile like you said. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah. All right. So Saga of the Beast, right? This. This was huge at this point. So his fortress is now dead, right? And I was able to charge Murder Fang. So uh, I went from... Let's see. I went from all the way back here with a lot of my stuff to placing basically everything that I wanted to right up right up in this, in this general direction. And that was because I got that Warlord trade-off. Um, I, I think I advanced and charged... Like Murder Fang, my uh, Wolfguard Jump guys, uh, my Wolfguard Battle Leader, I advanced and charged. And I think I did the same thing. I don't think I needed to, but I got these Grey Hunters in as well. Um, so got that off, right? And then, so what happened here was I charged them in with Murder Fang, fought with him first, and the Fortress has 16 wounds. I spent the, it's just one CP for Touch of the Wild, all right? And what that does is on a, you spend it on a character, and on a four up, on a four up to hit, that hit counts as two hits now, all right? So Murder Fang hitting on a two up, but everything that's a four up, all the four, fives, and sixes that I roll now count as two hits. So I ended up getting like a stupid amount of hits. And then... Murder Fang's weapons are uh, D3, and I get to reroll wounds. So this this thing just like stacks really, really well. And if I I didn't have my uh, Wolf Lord, my Herald Death Wolf, in, I kind of screwed up my Auras several times here. Um, but to reroll the ones to hit, and that would just would have been even more ridiculous. But also yeah. uh, something that I didn't realize. This is our first game playing with Saga of the Saga of the Beast. And so litanies, the regular litanies are, are open to Space Wolves now, but they also get their own, their own litany. And that is, uh, what is it called? It's like, um, Tale of the Wolf King and the Lord of the Deeps, right? And so it's everything within six inches of a wolf priest that is inspiring that they, they can add one damage to their attack characteristic oh wow for when they're fighting against monsters or vehicles right so all of those what i ended up getting so i did 15 damage to you and uh so i five unsaved wounds right five but all of those if those have been one more damage four damage instead of three i mean i would have popped that easily i i could have i could have popped your anything that it goes touches like big like your Morkanaut or, um, you know, if you were playing Knights or something, like now you could send, if you could manage to get Murder Fang in there, 
then he can murder something like pretty pretty efficiently if you get all that murder off Fink and murder murder Fink can definitely murder he's he's back with a vengeance um so yeah i i didn't need it but it would have been it would have been nice it was another it was a stack that i didn't realize we kind of threw the the rules the new rules together pretty quickly before this so yeah, yeah same i didn't even realize they were so easily available yet yeah. Yeah, and then I interrupted to make sure I got an attack before I lost my fortress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was good. I was it's it's deceiving because you fight with any other vehicle, it seems like. And like most like a lot of the other like just transports, you know, just completely suck in close combat. Um uh, not so not so with the fortress. Well, if, without the upgrade, because I've got that that weapon that lets me hit. It adds like three to your hit value. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, yeah, my my weapon skill is only five. So it was the the flesh roller thing or whatever you called it. Death roller. Death roller. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, here, just a little tactics tactics bit, right? So I, the order that I did things, I fought with Murder Fang first, and then he interrupted and almost killed Murder Fang, which made me a very sad panda. Um, and then what I did next is I fought with these Grey Hunters that I had charged into the, the fortress. And the reason I did that was I was pretty confident that the one or two, the two uh, Grey Hunters here would not have been able to take that last wound, because I had one wound left, last wound off of the the uh, fortress and so they piled in and i got i was able to get them up into this general uh up basically into this like this area right here right and that's what i was going for was kind of blocking that off so you can't with your boys or your uh your bikes over here you have to go around this whole you have to go around that whole thing right um so that is something that, again, if you're if you are getting into the game, learning how so with charge, the learning how to operate charge, pile in, and consolidation. All right. So, quick tidbit: the charge you just have to get one of your models within one inch of the enemy, and then you can move the rest of them the full charge distance wherever the crap you want to, as long as you don't get into one inch of an of a unit that you didn't charge and as long as you maintain unit co uh, unit cohesion right that two inches spacing and then when you select a fight you get to pile in and what the rule states is that you have to you can move up to three inches in the direction of the closest enemy unit so that could be a unit that you didn't charge and it says nothing about there's no restrictions on moving within one inch there so you could tie up a whole nother unit by doing that and then if that's just the pile and then you get to do the same thing again with consolidation right so if you yeah. if you place your your units correctly then you can move essentially a whole another movement phase um you have to be careful with your spacing because if you get too spaced out then you can't move because you can't bust unit cohesion um and then another thing to point out is the um the try pointing right so whenever you do that using that pile in and consolidation is a good way so let's say this guy right here um as long as you get essentially think of it like if you had a, a dude here a dude here and a dude here to where the distance between this guy this guy and this guy is is less than the base size of the unit you're surrounding then that whole unit cannot fall back and if you're unfamiliar with fallback, then you what you do is you just select the unit to fall back, and then now that frees up the rest of your army, if you have a shooting army, to just merc that unit, right? Um, so we're not we're not seeing this here, but that is another like really pro tip for the fight phase. Uh, anything on that, Kyle? Nope. Dropping some knowledge, some 40k knowledge up in here up in here homeboy yep so i'm explaining this no one cares i already explained it yeah i am i am pretty worried though at this point like what exactly you're gonna do with that 
all of that fighting fighting power there. Yeah. Well, fortunately, I have the wrong thing fighting the storm shields. Yeah, the um right. Mobs. Right. Not, wasn't meant for them. Mhm. Yeah, so let's break this down cuz this is a pretty crucial turn like your decision making here. Yeah, so I got an objective to it was an orc objective. It's like if you charge with three things, you get a point. If you charge with five, you get D3 points. There's that cruise missile coming in. Yeah, there he goes. So I'm like, all right, you know what? I kind of want to charge things anyway, so I'm just going to fully commit to this. I'm charging with every single unit that is not in contact already, which, as it turns out, was uh, five plus the weird boy. Mm -hmm. um, and I noticed you had that gap behind there. Again, like I, like I mentioned, storm shields. I knew I had to take out your cavalry with something other than power claws. So right. Power claws, you're just going to block most of it. Right. So I need that that volume. Mm -hmm. I have 25 boys up there, so I jumped them to where my flyers used to be. I moved my war boss in there to snipe some characters with his attack because again he's got the that cunning ability. On the turn he charges, he's dealing four four wounds, or no, sorry, for each wound he deals four damage. Yeah. So <laughs> that's a really lot of damage. I'm really confident I can kill characters. He's got a squig with him just in case. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he he's he's ready to lop some heads. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Murder Fang. It's like, man, I, I kind of just want to shoot him. I was, I did attempt to shoot him didn't really expect much with that because dude i was i was so worried that that was that's exactly what was going to happen i was like man because i knew that if you, if i at least charge if i at least got to the fight phase and i could kill something else or at least severely damage if you charge your orc boys but yeah i was like sweating that you were just going to get that one wound from you know some lucky shooter or whatever <laughs> yeah so i left a gap in between my boys for that war boss to be able to to make a charge through mm -hmm. um but then ended up killing him in the shooting phase, so he had to he had to take out Murder Fang himself. Yeah. Um, then the boys, you know, those storm shields there, they have the boys were, had to take care of those. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's definitely the best way to get by invuln saves. Yeah. It's just massive attacks. Yeah, and then more could not just plowing through the middle there. Mm hmm. Yeah, the the ability it gaining the three extra inches on that move is it three inches right up to eleven? Yep. Yeah, I mean that's that is it now it can as you can see it can move it can get into that backfield and it can mess some stuff up. Um, and I want to just point out too. So I want to ask you actually. So if I would not have locked these these bikes up, would you have sent this whole bike squad around? Absolutely. Yeah. So. That so what I did I kind of explained earlier is I piled in and consolidated into one inch with uh, these guys with uh, my my wolf guard there. So and again, as you can see, why that's significant is because now he has to fall back. But then it's like, what you can't you can't charge. What is this? Charge can't shoot, can't advance, can't do anything. Right. Um, so and that's. That's why I did that because I knew I saw that even though I like have, I'm building a wall that he has to get through all that jazz, uh, he could still get around there as he obviously did with his war boss. And then another point too for for uh, kind of what I was talking about earlier, having that screen right here. So that's all good and all, but he can still declare he can still multi charge right, which is what you end up doing. And then I think my my HQ little bubble is totally open. Anyway, so my screen here, uh, in 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 idea is great, but it didn't work at all. Anyways, yeah. but you could just multi charge and yeah. and I charged the Morkanot first to make sure I didn't take Overwatch fire from that that Grey Hunter squad. Yeah, so I multi charged the the cavalry and the Grey Hunters with the Morkanot. Right. Yeah, and so again, new players like the order of things that you do thing in is is really big, and that's. That's one of the things that can separate a good player from a not so good player is is that you know so knowing like the Morganot yeah he can weather 
he could totally weather Overwatch from the only thing that I have doing Overwatch over here, really. Yeah. Uh, he could totally weather that just fine versus I could get lucky and, you know, get it, knock a few wounds off on that war boss. Right. Um, and the Morkadot, even if you get a wound on the Morkadot, I can repair it. Right. The boss, he's got no way of recovering wounds. Right. And then now he's, and the, the war boss is sitting at eight wounds, which is a lot of wounds, but I have a lot of close combat over here that can dish out some damage. So that, that eight wounds, if tactically, if things go, go off for you, or if you did something in a different order or, or a different place, then I could totally handle that. If I got like, if I am able to get the charge off on some things that can hurt you pretty bad, you know? Right. Um, so, but you're, you are totally sitting on your high horse with the initiative for sure, because this is capable of killing any one of these things. Uh, maybe not altogether, but you, know, you also have your support over here. So, uh, pretty pretty substantial turn tactically with how this game's going down. Uh, with my tying this up here, you're getting your orc boss around. But yeah, if you would have gotten this whole squad around, then that would have been bad news bears, I think, for me, for sure. I mean, that might have been the game, you know, could easily because you could have just walked through everything. And that was like the, the beating heart of my army at that point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you uh, you did jumped. Yep. And I multi charged with them as well. Mm hmm. Or I, I attempted to. Uh, yeah. They failed that those two failed jumped boys really, really hurt me. Yeah, for sure. Um, definitely like the you you made it you made a comment with the orcs that like as long as they're going and they have momentum then they can just roll over stuff but if one little thing goes awry here or there then it could just make the entire thing fall apart yeah um and i think that's that is totally what happened with those two if you would have gotten those off then that i would have been i would have had to be depending on just lucky rolls to make it out of there yeah then short a second ago my weird boy he killed himself from perils yeah <laughs> yeah Which that was luck that was lucky for me though that was kind of his last use anyway so yeah it didn't really bother me it's true it's true yeah and you you totally let him expose so whenever i dropped those terminators i could have just murked him anyways yeah. there he is yes i split my attacks between the priest and Nall there mm -hmm. and i could not kill Nall. He had what two wounds left? Two, yeah, two wounds left. Yeah, and th this is my first time playing Null Stormcaller, and I just recently acquired him along with a lot of my other Space Wolves. Um, and uh, yeah, I was pretty, I was pretty happy with his ex with his uh, his performance. He came through. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then here, so using your stratagems wisely, right? So I used that touch of the wild which i was just it, i that was the only thing i wanted to happen this whole game with the new rules is i want to see how that touch of the wild went and it went really really well but using my so we have two instances here where um right here you use your last cp to interrupt my interrupt so yeah. you it's a weird thing yeah you spent two cp but I also burned two CP on that. Um, but that allowed, because I, my dudes would have put a hurt on one yeah, of your I units had over there. there. I had. So right. Um, that. Yeah, yeah. And so that was, that was excellent usage of your stratagem there. And then over with the murder fang over here, um, like I said, I had that one wound left. You charged in with your orc boss, and I was worried about both your orc bosses because they're, you know, orcs are just melee beasts. And I was able to, you killed him, obviously, but used that, made sure I had enough stratagem so I could, uh, or CPs, so I could use that uh, fight again before you die, only in death to duty end. Yeah. Uh, so I could merc that war boss back. So, yeah, because I think that, like, if you would have had that war boss to come around, come around here, and then get into like Harold Deathwolf or whatnot, get the charge off the next next turn, and you have this and like both of your world bosses right there. That would have not been fun. Yeah. So this is your your turn now. Mm-hmm. Yep. So 
Um, you know, we've got our massive melee thing going on. The fact that you failed this charge over here, I just ignored this this unit, basically. Um, I, I was thinking about uh, maybe, th like, well, the Thunderwolves are tied up. I think I sent this off of this objective because I scored that one um, right. to come around. I was like, eh, but that's just one Thunderwolf. You know what? I'll just, I'll just not worry about it. Oh, yes. Right here. This. Yeah, that was the nail in the coffin. For sure. So, uh, Null Stormcaller smited him on an 11. On a 10 or 11, so he did the super smite. So instead of rolling for D3 mortal wounds, he rolls D6 mortal wounds. And he rolled a 6, which just so happened to be the number of wounds that the war boss on the bike had left. That yeah. was huge for me. And very bad for you. <laughs> very bad. Yeah, I think that, what, in the matter of the end of your turn to just the psychic phase of my turn, you lost both of your war bosses. Yeah. You know, uh, you'd lost your 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 war pet or your uh, your weird boy, which you said you used him up, but mm -hmm. like you basically lost all of your HQ. My knobs got shut up, so I, I knew at this point, like, the Morknot's gone here. You've got mm -hmm. all those Thunder Hammers. At yeah. this point, all I really had left was my bikes. The boys aren't going to cut up by themselves. The bikes are my last elite unit that can dish out hurt. Right. Yeah, and... Um, Yeah, so I was I was worried. So when I dropped in my terminators over here uh, to the to the left there, um, I was glad that I what I picked off like two or something or one yeah. one and an, and got another wound on it. Either way, I did some damage because I was I wasn't really sure what you had going on with that, and I was I was worried, you know. But yeah. dropping those like I did that was great. And then at that point. I felt pretty confident. As you can see, I got Harold Deathwolf over here, yeah. came around the other edge, and um, at that point, I was like, "All right, Harold Deathwolf." Like he only had like he had like five or six wounds left, so he totally he can handle that. No big deal, right? Um, so yeah, you you losing all of the HQs like that, and then having your your orc boys. Here we go. Good end of the game. This is where you called it. But yeah, you, so I charged my bikes into Harold, mm -hmm. and they died. To him. They, they didn't deal a single wound. Yep. I got my, my orcs in. They did minimal work there. Mm -hmm. Did one wound to Null. Yeah. And I was just like, you know what? I, I can't. There's, there's, there's no way. You're going to table me. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I had three three Thunderwolves left, you know, and those, those, even if I just had those with what is on the table right now, I could have wiped that up, you know, yeah. uh, just cause like those do both, both, what we're talking about, they do both volume and, uh, high damage, you know, cause they have the thunder hammers, but they also have the crushing teeth and claws, which also got some stratagem, uh, support. And that was, that was good. Um, I, I used it, but it didn't. It didn't come through at all. But it's it's. I used it against the Morkanot, but I missed all of my crushing teeth claws on the five up to hit because of your toughness being so high. But what it does is it um, it increases the damage of the crushing teeth and claws to two damage. Um, so you could have like all the your thunder hammer attacks going through a strength eight, and then you have your strength five crushing teeth and claws extra three attacks. Um, and then on the charge, they get a plus one to hit, right? Because of space wolves. And then now they count for two damage instead of one. You know, you could, you could definitely do some damage, some Primaris stuff or, you know, the plethora of other things on the table now that are, or in 40k now that are uh, two damage or two wounds. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. And then, and then also at this point, you know, I can I can fight you to death over here, but I also have complete board control because you have nothing, nothing over here, and I've got two unmolested, completely unmolested squads. Um, right. Where if I if I draw any of these objectives here, here, and here, and here, and here, and here, you could probably contest this. 
you only have what one dude over here yeah just so mob. i can i can and he's already tied up in, in combat anyways yeah. right so i could just keep him there and then take that objective and then all of these i can take within a single move of any of these units over here so if i had drawn any objective related stuff i could have scored that easily um but yeah, no, this game totally came down to like our tactics and our choices. And I think that's why I really liked it is because it was, I think it was balanced armies going up against each other, balanced lists. There wasn't anything that, that was like super OP or like, oh my gosh, there wasn't anything that we couldn't have handled from each other's lists, right? So it just came down to those decisions and a few a few solid rolls, like me getting that smite on the, uh, getting those six wounds off the smite, you know, that's failing my charges. Yeah. And you, you failing your charges. Yeah. So I think, I think for the fate, for the fates of the lady of luck was not with you today. However, um, you got a lot of love from the saga of the beast and, Oh, oh definitely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so if you're if you're watching this uh, and you're looking at Saga of the Beast, if you're an orc or a Space Wolf player, or if you're about to play someone that you know is, is all about that, or you're just checking it out, you know, Saga of the Beast is is great for both both armies. I think I, I do yeah, want to. I barely touched my my rules for it as well. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, in in, in for the Space Wolves, um, I remember playing all the. All the games I played against you where you're playing Iron Hands, the most frustrating thing was like the toolbox of stratagems that you had for any given situation, you know? Right. And the Space Wolves stratagems just sucked because they came out before all that stuff. Yeah. And um, yeah, but no, a lot of the stock Space Marine stratagems, not all of them, but a lot of them came into play. And, and a few of them I used like quite a bit. Um, and another cool one too is the the honor was it the hero of the chapter where you can get another warlord trait on the table, and the space wolves warlord traits are pretty pretty awesome. So if you could double up with that and manage to turn those into auras, whew, like mm, that that could that could be a late game beast, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, g getting the litanies and the the new stratagems open for the space wolves is huge. Is great, you know um yeah so any any further any last thoughts kyle not for me no yeah so uh like i said hope you guys enjoyed um let us know how we're doing in the comments uh check us out on facebook and instagram and uh please subscribe and like i said let us know how we're doing uh let us know how you like this whole format of having the the battle report being basically no analysis just the what, what happened, and then having this deeper dive video of the analysis. Um, let us know how you like that. Um, I think that it could be pretty cool just because if you, you know, you can manage your expectations of what you want. You don't have to sit down for however long this video is just to see how this battle went down. You could just watch the shorter one, right? Or if you're a newer player, or if you want to see how exactly everything played out, then you have that choice, right? So let us know how we're doing. Uh, thanks for joining us. And all of you nerds have a good, good day. Yes, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, have a great day. Nerds and nerdesses. Nerds and nerdesses, yes.